12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. Stories welcomes you to Otherworld Seattle, a story heavy, rules light Call of Cthulhu actual play. And now, our keeper, Wes Otis. Welcome to Otherworld Seattle, episode number 25. My name is Wes Otis. I'm here with some wonderful players. Let's start with Saint. Hello, I am playing Bailey Wolf, and she's very nervous about all of this, you know, magic nonsense happening. So we'll see how it goes. Hey, y'all, I'm Mac, and I'm playing Cecil Mulgrove. And oh my God, what even is happening anymore? Hi, I'm Pooja, and I'm playing Mira Rao. Oh, also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things have definitely been better. Hey, I'm Michelle, and I'm playing Maribel Ochoa, and we're talking to Hephaestus about working some metal like you do. Before we start, please consider supporting the show through Patreon or on coffee.com spelled K-O-F-I. Now, on with the show. Which, that's a great segue to a recap. Last time we got together, Cecil decided to take all of the different sigils that you had found in a book... She ripped the pages out, which I'm still heartbroken about. Even though it's fiction, it's not in the real world at all, but it still hurts. And took those and interposed them in a Photoshop document on top of each other and then printed it out. And it created this strange 3D effect on the paper, even though it shouldn't have at all. It should have just printed it straight out. You got in an argument with Cecil. Cecil left. And then Mira decided to burn the paper. That caused some kind of chemical reaction with the magic of the paper and turned it into a metal disc, a metal that you've never encountered before that really kind of perplexed you. It didn't have any markings on either side. Meanwhile, Cecil went to a computer cafe and her mother showed up and had a conversation with her about wanting to bring her back into their family, that went about as well as you can imagine with her saying, don't call me, I'll call you. And then Cecil went back to the house to find that you all had left to Madame Peaches to find out more about the symbols and possibly what this metal was. Then Cecil called a descendant of parents who lived in Arkham to find out what happened in the area and was basically told that after the raid in the 1930s that the government basically shut down the whole area and kind of made it slowly die off during the Great Depression. And it was definitely a coordinated effort that they were trying to hide what was going on in the area. Cecil decided they were going to do a big story on it for Seattle Strange. Looking at this metal back at Madame Peach's, you all decided that maybe possibly another Greek god might be a good way to go. So you called Hermes, who got you in touch with Hephaestus, god of blacksmiths, and he came in and took a look at it, and he ran the edge of it down his arm, and it actually cut him. And that's where we had stopped that particular episode. So you're all with Madame Peaches, Hermes, and Hephaestus, and he's got this huge cut down his arm. And he turns and he says, that's really interesting. Take a look at the wound. Do you take a closer look or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know some people are squeamish about blood, so. I just imagine all of us, our heads like leaning in. <laughs> yes. He goes, it's not really that it cut me. It's that it's magic is pushing my skin apart because it is itself almost like a I won't say anti-magic, but a, a different type of magic that is causing a rip in the fabric of my being. I'm going to have to talk with someone about getting this patched up, but 
I don't know if I can make this into anything. You know, it's a disc. Uh, if I hit it with a magic hammer, with something with supernatural power behind it, would it cause more rips? I, I don't know. But it seems like it might be able to create portals, but those portals would be very hard to close. It's like rips in reality. And for someone like me, if you were to shove this into my chest or something, it would rip me apart. I would no longer exist. It's kind of like a very violent magnet. Kind of. <laughs> Fighting and pulling apart. Uh, do you think that this would have the same effect on someone like normal, like us? Well, semi-normal. You mean with no supernatural abilities? Yes. I don't think so. This is a different kind of magic. I don't know where you got this from, but this isn't earth magic. This isn't like the folk magic when you think of earth and humans and them casting spells or runic things. It's the opposite of our magic. And so I think that it's just reacting to the magic around it. If you went to a sacred place, Stonehenge or the pyramids, you could use this disc to literally slice open space or the fabric of the reality because of the magic that is inherent with those sites. But, like, I don't think you could take this against a wall and create a cut here. I mean, unless this has some magic around it. And imagine Madame Peach just shakes her head like, no, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not do that. I'm going to succumb to just a basic uh, childlike urge. I want to poke the thing. I want to touch it. <laughs> it feels cool to the touch. It definitely feels strange to you. And it doesn't hurt you at all. But I will say that probably because of your closeness to the messenger god, you may have some residual magic radiation. And so it feels a little strange to you, but it's not like hurting you or anything like that. It's just, just like a big coin, you know? I think I said it was like four inches by, you know, so like a disc, a small plate. You might put a scone on it. <laughs> <laughs> but not a magic scone. No, no magic no, scone. No. Only mundane scones for us all. Mundane scones. <laughs> okay, so we can... Or right now, it can be just handled somewhat without blowing us up. That's all I really wanted to know. I was putting my whole life on the line just for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> just I had to know, will it do something? Okay, so I don't know. I'm turning to the others and being like, what, what, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> be a pretty good way to discorporate some kind of entity. That's really risky. I wonder if it would work. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should just put it back in the box and put it someplace safe. I mean, you can put it in some place safe for now, but they have a tendency to turn up like bad pennies. Hephaestus says, he goes, you know, um, that's just the nature of supernatural things. They just pop up anywhere. Do you know how many times Gabriel has had to hide the Ark of the Covenant? It's almost comical at this point. Oh, so you don't have that big warehouse? No, they moved that a long time ago. That movie actually showed where it was. We had to get rid of that whole thing. It was a real pain in the ass for him. <laughs> Top men. <laughs> <laughs> I was just say, all right, put it back in the box. That's all I was going to confirm. I'm okay with that for now. Uh, so Peach just says, well, there, there's a lot of options for how we want to deal with this. I guess I want to know what is our end goal with all this? Like, how do you want to deal with this? It seems like one of the big elements to understand here is if we just keep him away from us with maybe one of the sigil-based spells we found, can he just go to our other selves and just pull us back into this mess through them? Because if that's the case, we might want to go with a more strong and scary and more dangerous angle of trying to fully, fully get rid of him uh, from our universe, is, if that's possible. I'm not sure what I'm even talking about at this point, but that's the biggest question on my head. Bailey's definitely, like, wringing her hands here. <laughs> just, just not. <laughs> I don't think he's killable, even with this thing. 
I think we can just the best we can hope for with this is to get him out of here, at least for our lifetimes. But I was going to say, if we use this thing and it doesn't work. If we use this thing and it does work, how much of a target are we painting on our backs for every other pantheon in existence? Yeah, because we have a god killer right here. Or a door, a key, kind of more like that. Or, or whatever it is. I mean, honestly, I won't say that getting involved in the gods has brought us nothing but pain, but it's kind of brought us nothing but pain. <laughs> no, I, I'll agree with that. It's not, it, my life isn't better. I'll say that. I mean, right now, only those of us here know of its existence. If we use it on anybody, Mira's right. We're painting a target on our backs because then everyone knows it exists. Hephaestus says, well, so when it comes to every other pantheon, I will say that this particular god is a danger to us, a a big danger. So I don't know how, I, I think you would be looked upon whether you banish him or wound him grievously so that he can't come back for a long time. Because gods always seem to come back somehow, except for when the messenger god eats them. You know, I, I don't know. You might have problems, but I think at this point, you're already in it, and I don't know if you're ever going to get out of it. That's just how this stuff works. Once you get into supernatural territory, it's very difficult for mortals to get out of it without some form of, I don't know, sacrifice. Death, yeah. Now I know why Paul Bunyan was uh, stark raving mad and running around the woods. Just seems like a better alternative. (laughs) Yeah, well, I almost think, uh, it pains me to say this, it feels very stupid, but considering our options, we might want to let Lilith in on what's going on, because if she's found a way to avoid and be a pain in the ass to a entity and Bailey has a bit of a flashback of the vision she had of the other entities. She's already much more powerful and capable and skilled than we will be in our entire lives or multiple lives probably. I wonder if it might be more likely she'll be interested in one-upping one of these entities again. Why not? It might be sport at this point. Uh, I don't know. How do I think? She seemed open for bargaining before. And having you know, multi-dimensional allies might be a boon to her. The important difference between the messenger god and Lilith is Lilith was human once. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it feels like, I mean, Lilith managed to escape having all of her selves destroyed, which is exactly what we're trying to escape. And I I don't think she's going to use this against us simply because we're coming to her honestly and saying, hey... Here's the issue. Even if she does, how is that any worse of a situation than we're in already? True. I'm just adding, you know, more vampires chasing us <laughs> this time. I mean, technically, they're already doing that, or at least for my fam. <laughs> at least vampires are killable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's a one thought in the back of my mind that everything that we do, that I am witness to might be already being broadcast to our uh, tormentor already. Um, I have no way of figuring that out. I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, Just wanted to put that out there as (laughs) just in case that becomes a thing. Um, I truly have no plan. Then we better then we better act fast. Yeah, uh, I now I'm thinking maybe I I shouldn't even should I go there? I don't even know. Uh, I'm going to just Look around. Is Hermes still here? How many gods are in the room? Hermes, yeah. Hermes is still there. <laughs> um, is there some sort of aura on me that, uh, I don't know. I, I just realized that I could literally be just a uh, walking eyes and ears for the enemy. Is there a way to tell? I mean, you have a mark on you. Uh, what? Your face. He changed your face. You can't see it because... You're not s- magical. Do you want to see? And he walks over and he covers your eyes for a moment and speaks a couple of words and he takes it away and nobody else can see what Bailey's face looks like. Madam Peaches has a weird feeling about she wrote it off as 
oh, you know, we're talking about all this. We have this magic thing. It must be the disc that we're dealing with or whatever. So, but she can't really see what's going on. And you walk over to the mirror and you see that your face has a bunch of the same symbols that were in the book, except for the one that keeps you away from him. And they're just, they look like tattoos all over your face. Can you give me a resolve check? I was about to ask for one. (laughs) (laughs) I know. What? I got 55. Awesome. So you're a little freaked out. And he goes, I'm sorry. I thought you knew that it was there. I didn't realize I, I should have, I should have said something. Now, just so you know, I don't think he can hear you or see through your eyes or anything like that, but he's definitely got a locator on you so he can pop up at any time. We could try to undo it. Oh, you ha- yes, could, would that, would it kill me? <laughs> no, it wouldn't kill you. It might mess with your mind a little bit. I think it's worth the risk. Uh, definitely, my hands are like all over my face. Can, it, does it, can I feel, I probably can't feel anything. You can't feel it, but you, yeah, it is weird. Like when you touch it, it's, it's just strange. Would putting the other symbol on her get rid of those? Oof. I mean, it's risky, but it might work. I mean, because I don't know about all y'all, but before we go talk to Lilith, I think we need to get some tattoos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Well, uh, I mean, we can give it a try, but I, it's never been done before, so I have no idea what would happen. Oh, well, you know, we're doing a lot of unprecedented dent, dent, dented things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she stutters in fear. I, I mean, Bailey, it's ultimately up to you if you want to try to have Hermes remove them before we get tattoos. It's the spell or the disc, basically. It's up to you. <laughs> On my face? Yeah. You cut my face? With- no, it wouldn't cut your face, but... The, I thought the idea was pressing the, the item against your face to see if it would dissolve the magic. Oh. All right. Yeah, I was thinking that. That I'm I'm willing to try anything because my mother would kill me if she saw it face tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he walks over. Uh, uh, Peach is actually the one that's going to do it. What the other guy did was ran it over his arm like it was a blade on the edge. And that's what caused the cutting. This time she lays the piece of metal on your cheek just for a moment flat. And you're watching in the mirror. And when she picks it up, there's this weird, and you feel this, it's like there's this fluctuation on your jaw. And you suddenly feel like you're here, but also in infinite other places. By the way, do you remember when you met the messenger god in a different game? I do, yes. Okay. Yes. Because it was it was Providence Decayed and I didn't know if you if you remembered that or not. Okay. I did, yeah. I was just like a plain clueless. But, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I, well though I was wondering though if I was if Bailey would remember it. Actually during this moment is where you'd probably get an inkling of what happened because this has opened up because it's right, obviously, it's your head, it's right by your brain, so everything's kind of coming together. I do need a resolve check. All right. <laughs> Going through the gamut. Yeah. Please <laughs> don't mess with me. I've been so lucky because I originally said that, okay, I got 55 again. Okay. Oh, should I roll it again? <laughs> awesome. I don't know. That feels, okay. I'm still going to make you take, let's see. You're, yeah, because this is big. This is a big thing. I'm going to make you take four resolve points. So it doesn't freak you out to that point, but it does lower your your max down. So she has to rub this thing across your face, and it gets rid of all of the marks. But when she's doing it, it's just weird, especially the forehead right up here. That just opens up. And see, you know, the whole third eye thing where it's just like all of a sudden everything kind of comes in at once and you feel like you're on a roller coaster through different realities. Oh, she's getting queasy. I'm definitely getting queasy. Yeah. Once that's done, though, your face is back to normal as soon as she pulls it away. And the radiation feel you were feeling, that that awkward feeling also abates. <gasps> I collapse on the floor, just like, yeah, just heaving, probably dry heaving. <laughs> Let's be real. 
Okay, that was a lot. That was a scary event. Yes, yucky. So what do you all want to do next now that that's been dealt with? Because you know the messenger god knows where you are right now. And he'll have known that this just happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's, uh, vamos. Vamos and tattoos. All right. Is everybody on board for the tattoo thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Squeamishly, yes. All right. So Bailey, Hephaestus has removed this mystical radiation, and you kind of got a glimpse of all of these different realities. You were able to deal with it. You made your resolve roll, but it's still, you know, a little freaky. And all of you kind of realize that time is ticking. You're going to have to make some decisions and make some moves here quick because the messenger god isn't going to wait forever for Bailey to get back to it. So what is the plan? You know, are you going to get the tattoos? Are you going to skip the tattoos? Are you going to talk with Lilith? What do you think you'd like to do? Well, I think we need to get the tattoos before we go talk with Lilith. I feel like the tattoos are like (laughs) non-negotiable. A given. Yeah, we need to get those because any form of protection we can have, we need it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we taking the metal disc with us? Uh, I wouldn't... Well, what is... What do the gods in the room think? Sh- should we have this? Hephaestus says, you know, that's actually a really hard call. I mean, if you're using the spell, I think not showing him that you have an item that could possibly rip holes in the fabric of reality might be a good idea. Uh, That's something I don't think anybody should have. Um, I think we should find a place that we could put it where at least for a while it would be safe. These kind of items are like bad pennies. You think that, you know, they just pop up places you don't want them to pop up. But if you're going to use it on them, if you're going to like shove him through a portal or whatever or cause him damage you know you saw how it cut me it probably would do something similar because just as a reminder what it's doing is it's not necessarily cutting the skin as it is ripping a hole in reality especially with supernatural creatures so when you use the side of it the edge that's what kind of caused that to happen He says, you know, you can use it as a weapon, but you've got to be faster than the messenger god. And that seems unlikely. It would be difficult to land a blow on it without one of you getting taken out pretty quickly. So I think you should hide it, in my opinion. I feel like the box idea is still a good one. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I say we we leave it in the box. We hide it somewhere because we don't want anyone coming after Madame Peaches either if they find out about this thing. Yeah. I too would like to avoid that, she says to you all. She brings the box over and you put it in. She goes, I honestly think the best place for this is outside of this city. I mean, this area seems to be kind of a magnet for this thing at this point, you know? There's a lot going on. Mira, did you say that there was a, some kind of cult or something in the tunnels underneath the, the city? Did they chase you? Yes. Yes. Yes, they did. And the cops are in on that one. Yeah. So maybe here isn't a great place. I've forgotten about that and all of this. rest of this. <laughs> I mean, do we wrap it in chains and throw it in the ocean? I mean, well... Even the ocean What's... probably has some stuff in it. But... <laughs> the ocean has a lot of stuff in it. I mean, I feel like the thing that all those stories don't tell you about throwing things in the ocean is corrosion happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does, yeah. Yeah, that's why vampires get out sometimes. One thing that keeps maybe kind of, I don't know, it seems like it might be a possibility. It might sound stupid, but I keep flashing back to the amount of different pockets and spaces of time that there are. Perhaps there's one that might be more kind of like a prison, or at least especially far away from this accessible plane. I I don't know if there's a way to verify any of that, and honestly, every time I have a glimpse of something like this, I seem to be on the precipice of mm, madness or maybe a little more dire situation, but if we have to use this thing, perhaps we can use it to push something 
our messenger god or our whatever enemy ends up coming after us into some sort of void where they just are trapped for some uh, i don't know time honestly i want to say amount of time but i you know is time a thing is it space lots unsure right now yeah it really depends on where you're at is how time works some places it's a little bit timey wimey um, but hermes says well if we could send it into like a black hole I think that'd be interesting. I think that it would at least go someplace and be stretched out and spaghettified, I guess. I don't know what the, the term is, but just because of all the, you know, gravity and the gravity well and all that, I it would be difficult for anyone to use after something like that. But the problem is the nearest black hole is kind of far away. So in the meanwhile, we're stuck here on Earth could open a small portal and throw the box in and just hope that it keeps, you know, it disappears somewhere. All options are bad options at this point. Let's just really face the reality of this. Yeah, and that just seems like the worst option because we could never retrieve it if we needed it. And who knows who would pick it up from wherever we sent it. Peaches says, well, I could get in my car, take the box, and bury it somewhere where no one's going to look for it, or at least hopefully look for it. I don't know if any other option is going to be any better, but at least that way, if I go and do it, you all don't know where it is, and so no one can get it out of you. True. Yeah, I think I think the idea that you had was a uh, get in your car and go. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe put the box inside a plastic box, because then that'll never biodegrade. <laughs> <laughs> at least it'll take a lot longer. All right. Yeah, you could find like a cave system or something to drop it down. I was also thinking about that town that is on fire for the rest of forever because of the... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I forgot what it's what the town is actually called. Centralia, Pennsylvania. Yes. Oh, yeah, because of the uh, mine fire, right? Yeah. 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 And it, they have no idea how long it's going to burn for. Yeah, no way to put it out. They've dumped like water into the system and it's impossible to put out. Yeah, it just it won't go out. Yeah, po a poisonous mine. Perfect. Well, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Anyway, good luck to all of you. I, I will be back, of course, and I, I hope when I do get back, we can go and have a normal lunch that doesn't involve all of this mess, you know, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. But it has been interesting. All of you kind of step out and she hugs you each and says goodbye. And at the same time, Hermes and Nephestus also goodbye. And if you need anything, let us know. Uh, we'll help out the best we can. And you all head over to like a local tattoo parlor. And where do you want to get this tattoo? Like on the back of your shoulder, anywhere in particular? Forearm. Forearm? Okay. I want it under my hair and like, you know, on the back of my neck. On the back of your neck? Okay. Yeah. What's the least painful area to get a tattoo? Not your stomach. Yeah. For forearms aren't too bad. Shoulders aren't too bad. Thighs can be a little spicy. Anything where the bone isn't super close and then where you don't have like a lot of nerves. Um, I would not recommend the thigh, but maybe that's just because, like, I have a bunch of nerves on the top of my thigh. So, like, every time I wax my legs, it hurts. I have thigh tattoos, for what it's worth, and it gets a little spicy. Yeah. I can imagine. All right, yeah, no, I'm just, that's just, Bailey would be like, I'm just, look, I have not thought about this before. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, on uh, my arm, I'll just get a forearm. Uh, I'll do mine on, like, that meaty part of your hip. <laughs> All right, so for the next couple of hours it takes to get these things tattooed on you start to think about what the next decision is going to be where are you all going from here i guess since we don't have to get rid of the thing we just need to figure out if we want to talk to lilith yeah i think i think we do i think we need to talk to lilith want to yeah. and need to are two different things <laughs> yeah. yeah true so shall we do that or try to find her today hopefully she's in the same spot because i don't think we knew any of her other hangouts yeah because i would i would love nothing more than to leave lilith alone and just live our lives but here we are <laughs> 
it's not as hard as you would imagine because of all of your different connections. You're able to get in touch with her. And so you find yourself in a very large house in the, you know, kind of the ritzy suburbs of Seattle. And you're in a large room full of really old antiques, like stuff from literally antiquity. And she is sitting there on a large white, looks like a relatively comfy chair. And she says, uh, come in, sit down. I'm so, kind of surprised to see you all after our conclusion of our last business. I take it something else is going on. You could say that. Yeah. Yes. So how much information do you want to impart, just so I know? Bare minimum? Bare minimum. Yes. Okay. So basically that the, the messenger god is messing with you and what, like... And that he's gunning for her. Mm-hmm. It is truly a pain in the ass. So what would you like from me? Well, what's on the table? Is there anything you can do to help us? Hmm. I mean, all I want is out. <laughs> I can understand that. He's been gunning for me for a while, and making him go away would be advantageous for my plans and for my business. I don't want to have to constantly look over my shoulder. All right, you have a spell that you can cast that will ban him from this realm or from this reality. I can lure him to a spot where he is not quite as powerful as he would be other places. Sacred spots are always the best. And since uh, there are several sacred spots throughout the city, we could just lure him to one of those. Now, I could also add my voice to the spell that would give you a greater advantage in it working. So that's what I can bring. I will help you with the spell. We will take him to a place in the woods where he is a little less powerful. It'll still be very dangerous, but it's the best shot that we've got. And you all have that sigil on you, so that should be helpful. You do realize that only does things against his types, right? Not against yeah. us. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, know the, the limits of sigils. Also, remember, if you're separated from your sigil, it no longer protects you. So keep that in mind as well. If they take your arm off or your leg, it won't work anymore. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah. Also feels like at that point, bigger problems. Yeah. Blood loss is probably the biggest problem in that situation. Well, not to sound morbid. That's why I put mine where I did, because yeah, they'd have to cut off my head to get it. Don't tempt them. I'd rather be dead than dealing with this shit. <laughs> well, and in the back of your mind, it is an odd thing for her to bring up. You're like, uh, okay. <laughs> By the way, that doesn't affect us and it can be removed, you know, in a very violent way. Now, we have other business. Well, specifically, Mira and I have other business, mainly with your family. So my vampires have been having issues with your father and not your mom as much. She's kind of retired at this point. And I would like him to retire as well. And we would all like people to stop getting turned against their will. I'll help you with this spell. But that's going to be the extent of my goodwill. And you have to make a decision about the family business. Because now I'm here, which I've never been in this area before. And your father's never had to deal with me. So it's your choice on whether or not you want to persuade him maybe to move on to other more fruitful things. I am not going to talk about the morality of what my children do with you or anyone else. You have to decide what is the lesser of two evils. Anyway, here's the area that we're gonna be meeting. I'll see you there in, uh, let's say two hours. And she gets up and walks to the door and opens the door and just kind of looks at you all. Cecil is very happy to just walk right on out. Mm-hmm. Okay. You all walk out 
And we're kind of at a point where I think this is a good place for us to wrap up for this episode. Before we sign off, let's see where all of these wonderful people are, what they are doing, if anything. <laughs> If anything's going on right now, let's start with uh, Pooja. Hi, I'm Pooja. I've been playing Mira Rao, as you heard. Uh, you can find me on the internet as Forgotten Saves. And if you want to hear me play more TTRPGs, I'm on Happy Jacks RPG and a very special production of uh, Mekong Symphony for the Devil on Queen's Court Games. Hello, I'm Saint or Saint Spider, and uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Saint Spider TV. That's S A I N T S P I D E R T V. Thank you. Hey, y'all. I have been and will continue to be Mac Beauvais. You can find me everywhere online is at Strange Like That. Hey, I'm Michelle. You can find me on the socials at Michulu. That's M-I-C-H-U-L-H-U. You can also find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects if you subscribe to the Plate Mail Games catalog through Battle Bards. And I am Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games on Twitter, uh, also on Spoutable, which has slowly started becoming something that I've been more and more on. You can find all of our links on our website at 12sidedstories.com, all spelled out, all one word. And if you want to help out the podcast, definitely go over and either join us on Patreon or on Coffee, or you can give us a shout out on your favorite social media platform, or you can give us a review on your favorite podcast platform. <laughs> so any of those things are very helpful. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next uh, time for some more Otherworld Seattle. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye.